The information in this video is going to help you figure out which attachment style your ex is and thus which behaviors are going to tend to see, what they tend to do when they are feeling trapped or smothered, what to do when they're feeling abandoned, or, you know, maybe they have a healthy balance between these things. As always, if you guys enjoy this content, do me a favor, subscribe, hit like. If you like my shirt, leave a comment down below. And let's just dive right in. The first of the attachment styles is the secure style. So secure is when you've had a relatively good upbringing. Your parents were very responsive to your needs as a child. A parents slash caregivers were responsive to your needs as a child. You were pretty well taken care of. You weren't left crying in the crib for too long. You were picked up and cooed at and played with as a child. Your needs were basically consistently met and you learned to develop a healthy, strong attachment to your caregivers, which in turn plays itself out in your adult life. You're a pretty well-balanced, well-rounded person who hasn't experienced much in the way of trauma that would affect your ability to attach to others in a healthy way. You can see that someone who's secure can trust pretty easily. And like I said, that's because you were able to trust your caregivers. You trusted that there was going to be consistent food, consistent attention. You were going to be changed on time. Your needs in your infancy were largely met within a pretty timely manner. And so you felt pretty secure. Number two is that the secure attachment style tends to be pretty well attuned to their emotions and the emotions of others. We're still human. That doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes from time to time. Of course we do. By and large, you have a pretty good sense of how you're feeling and you can read the room decently well in terms of how others are feeling. And remember, what we're talking about here is attachment style, right? Your ability to healthily attach to someone else in a romantic or even platonic manner. Number three is that they can communicate when they are upset in a direct and straightforward manner. There's no passive aggressivity. There is no leaving small hints about why they're upset or not mentioning why they're upset or, or keeping it buried down deep inside because they're afraid to rock the boat as though someone will leave them because they're upset. They're able to say, hey, you know, what you just did right now wasn't all that cool. I didn't really appreciate that. And as you can imagine, this is a pretty important skill because if we allow things to fester and boil, that can quickly turn into resentment and arguments, and that can very quickly kill a relationship. So the ability to communicate with someone in such a way where you feel confident that they can talk to you, you feel confident that you can talk to them, and you know that you're not gonna get punished just because something's upsetting you in the relationship, and that bolsters trust. And the more trust there is in a relationship, the more intimacy can exist in a relationship. Number four, leads with cooperative and flexible behavior in relationships. Basically what that means is they're not afraid to give up the reins once in a while, and they're also not afraid to, you know, take the reins once in a while. Cooperation means that you can let your partner win sometimes, and you can do something that they want to do, and you don't feel like they're in control of the relationship, and you've lost control, and this is needs to panic. And flexible behavior meaning, flexible but firm, I think I would add in there, which is that you can stand your ground, and also you know when to lose. And losing doesn't mean the relationship's over. Losing means you know how to compromise. And I say losing very tongue in cheek. Losing is not the right word at all. A compromise is a better word. And knowing how to compromise with your partner and that your wants and needs are just as important as their wants and needs leads us to be in a healthy relationship where we're able to take the needs and desires of two people and bring them together and create something altogether better and whole. And like I said above, all of these things lead to intimacy and trust. So all things considered, secure seems to be one of the most common attachment styles. Most people have had a pretty good upbringing and that doesn't mean it's perfect. And I think it's overall important to remember that this is more of a pie chart than it is a, you are completely this or completely that. You can be mostly secure with a little bit of anxiety. That's normal. But speaking of anxiety, let's get to the next one, which is the anxious attachment style. So the anxious attachment style is the second most common attachment style on earth. Basically, the anxious attachment style child has learned that they have a bit of a tenuous relationship with their caregiver. Maybe they were left crying in the crib just a little longer. Maybe food was a little scarce. I don't wanna to point to any one specific thing because as we grow, we can change, we can go through trauma, and that can definitely impact our ability to be attached to people in a healthy manner. Remember, attachment style means how we can attach to one another. So things that happen in our lifetime 
granted, when you're in your childhood, it is the strongest because that's when you're learning how to attach at all. But having experiences as you grow up can impact your ability to have these healthy attachments. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind. Having a sensitive nervous system. In other words, you have anxiety. It impacts your ability to feel okay in uncertain situations. And that, in turn, will trigger a whole host of potentially negative or harmful behavior aimed at alleviating some of that anxiety. This can be things like nitpicking your partner or arguing with them or trying to get them to pay more attention to you when you feel as though you're being abandoned. The anxious attachment style's number one fear in relationships is being abandoned. Number two is they struggle to communicate their needs directly. Maybe you're afraid that you won't get your needs met, or maybe you're afraid that by communicating what your needs are, your partner may leave you. You're afraid to rock the boat in one direction or another because you're typically not used to getting what you want. And so you've taught yourself in your head and experience has taught you that why bother asking? If I ask, a bad thing will happen. So typically, we find it harder as anxious attachment styles to ask for what we want. Number three is when they're triggered, they tend to act out, and this can be in many different ways. This particular picture says makes partners jealous, but that's just one example. These are by no means exhaustive lists. When we're getting really triggered, and this can be because we're afraid of being abandoned, or maybe something is happening that's really making us freak out. If we have a bad relationship with our parents and we have a holiday coming up and we're afraid of spending time with them, that's an example of being triggered. Basically, the thing I'm afraid of is happening, or I'm afraid it's about to happen, or I perceive that it's going to happen. That is being triggered. And this can make us act in a whole host of ways that are typically undesirable, like nitpicking, like causing fights, like trying to make our partner jealous. That's very true. And these are just a few things that happen. And if you guys have identified some things that you do, or maybe an ex-partner does, or a current partner does when they're triggered, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe let's build a better list together. But that's a good example of some of the things anxious attachment style partners tend to do. You'll notice that they are afraid of being fired. And sometimes they're so afraid of getting fired that they quit before they're fired. And that is bordering right on fearful avoidant, which is our next attachment style. So let's just get right to that. So fearful avoidance, something that I am, tend to be more dependent in relationships. But when we say dependent, we're not talking about like clingy, needy. What we're talking more about is that they want relationships in their life openly more than dismissive avoidance, which tend to push away a lot of relationships. It's not so much that they don't want it, but they're afraid of being hurt by it. So that's the fearful part of fearful avoidant. They avoid something that has the potential to cause them pain. Number two, they strongly fear rejection. It's very true. And I think that most people tend to avoid rejection. It's something that doesn't feel very good. But for fearful avoidant, that is the core thing in relationships that they tend to be afraid of. I am afraid that if I get rejected, then that means I'm not good enough. And that obviously feeds into number three, having a low self-esteem. The reason that fearful avoidance fear rejection so much is because they have low self-esteem and because they feel that relationships bolster their ability to feel good about themselves. So they want a relationship. It's pleasurable. It feels good but they're afraid of having it because to have the thing means the thing can hurt me. I'm opening myself up and giving vulnerability and that has the potential to flatten me. Number four is sort of a handshake of all the things I just mentioned. Having high anxiety in a relationship because I'm afraid of rejection, because if I do get rejected, that will feed the belief that I'm no good. It'll feed the belief that I don't deserve good things, that I don't deserve good people, that there's a, a problem inherently with me that I'm no good. And a lot of the time what we'll do as fearful avoidance is we will tend to push people away so that we can have a reason to leave, right? So it's this weird backwards logic, but it, it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. I'm afraid of being hurt in a relationship. I think that my partner's going to dump me even if I'm working on very little, like even if they've just, they're quiet today because their boss yelled at them. They're having a bad day, but that makes me kind of freak out because I'm like, oh man, are they thinking of leaving of me? Did I do something wrong? I need to clarify. I need to figure out what's going on. If I get rejected, I'm screwed. So sometimes we'll pay that, right? With our own pushing away, our own version of avoidance because we're afraid that they're about to do something that's going to hurt us. That's a good example of a fearful avoidant. If I could boil fearful avoidant down into maybe one phrase, it is quit before you're fired, right? I'm afraid of getting fired. If I quit, you can't fire me. Now let's get to the big kahuna, 
the one that people talk about the most, the one that everybody thinks their ex is. Dismissive avoidant. All right, so dismissive avoidant is, I have not had a good experience growing up. I was not given a lot of attention growing up. I maybe was hit. I was never really held. I wasn't really played with as a child. There wasn't a hell of a lot of affection. There was no hugging, no telling each other, no telling your parents that you love them. And it's hard to say these things as a blanket statement because there's just so much that goes into it, right? The, the, the living experience, the growing experience, these are just generalities. So if you guys are like in the comments, my parents uh, as a baby told me they love me all the time, but my therapist tells me I'm dismissive avoidant. It's like, Right, this isn't a one-size-fits-all, this is a generalities type of video. Dismissive avoidance downplay the importance of romantic relationships in their life. They are very against relationships, not so much at an emotional level, but it's like the fear from Fearful Avoidant turned up to 12, right? It's a very high fear of being hurt or taken advantage of because they never learned how to trust other people because the blueprint to learning how to trust other people wasn't there in their childhood. So that leads us to number two, they're self-reliant because they had to be, because who were they gonna trust to take care of them? Because in their life, in their childhood, maybe in their adolescence, maybe in high school or college, they learned, I gotta count on me. The only person you can count on is yourself. But the one thing that breaks that down is when there's a big crisis, when there is a situation that they simply have no competence over, no ability to control, that's when they tend to become a bit more cuddly. And not even cuddly, but more reliant, more able to trust other people, more vulnerable. Because sometimes there's just situations you need to reach out for. Sometimes there is problems that you can't solve by yourself. And it's at that point, right, the brink that they finally reach out and ask for that help or ask for that closeness or ask for that aid, whatever it might be. Uh, if it's in a romantic relationship and there's uh, they're very lonely, if it's a problem they can't solve and they need to contact someone who can, that type of vulnerability. Then they'll trust people because they have to. So I hope this all made sense. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions down below regarding attachment styles. Maybe if you wanna leave some markers of yourself or maybe someone in your life that you know or an ex, and I can try my best to help you figure out which attachment style they may be. Remember, it's hard for me to say these things full stop because I don't know these people, and attachment theory is a theory. If you guys wanna learn more about attachment theory, let me know down in the comments below and maybe I'll make some future videos about them. But a great resource is Thais Gibson's channel, The Personal Development School. I'm gonna leave a link to her YouTube channel in the description, she's fantastic. We have interviewed her on this channel before and she definitely knows what she's talking about. I hope you guys really like this video. If you wanna work with me, my website is thelovechat.net slash coaching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.